or in 3ds Max in general. Okay, next up I'd like to show you a little tool that I'm going to provide you for modifying IESs. I didn't create this, I found it on the um, CG Architect website, but it's a very handy little tool. You'll notice over here that there is a, a photometric web file that's being used, and if I click load, I can actually load that and, and view what that light, uh, what that light's radiation looks like. Um, this 0 to 90 is as you go from straight down to 0 to 90 degrees is uh, at horizontal. And this program will let you go in and actually dial in the kind of IES you want. So if I wanted to change this, I could simply take my mouse and just draw curves. And as I left off, you'll see the effect that this has. And uh, here it, we're at zero. If you want to see your uh, effect at a brighter or darker level, you can adjust the brightness level. And you can also change um, how far away you are from the wall to sort of see how it fades off with distance. It's kind of handy. So I've changed the original IES. I, I can simply save this with a new name now. And we'll just call it test03. And I'll close this. And we'll go to the uh, file here and change this to test03. And uh, very quickly we see the changed shape of the IES and the changed rendering. The IES has inherent in it a certain amount of candelas, and you'll find this number changes. If you make your scene with very uh, your IES very large, this could come in at 50,000, and you, so you'll need to come in and retype what this value is. Mine look a little hot here as well, so I'll bring this down to 600. And uh, here you can see in a matter of just a few seconds, we've got a pretty decent idea of what those lights are going to look like. I can go ahead and travel a little further over here if we want to see it a little more clearly. And I think by getting my um, light to shine backwards a little bit, we've got a nice effect where it's lighting up the reflector a little bit more, which is one thing I think helps it look a little more realistic. Now, let's say you've got a render farm and you'd like to harness that extra power. You can do that, and really, the other machines don't even have to be that symmetrical with your current one. That is, you could be running a really fast primary workstation and your render slaves could be less effective. But since the uh, path tracing is done with a number of paths, you'll see I'm getting about 65,000 paths a second that are being traced. Any additional paths are just a bonus. So how do we bring those in? Well, it's real simple. Bring up our render dialog. First, I'll right-click on the active shade and hit close to deactivate that. Uh, and then we'll go bring on those additional engines. I just sim simply switch to active shade, go to the V-Ray RT tab, click render servers, and I've previously added the servers for the server numbers that are running the, um, the extra rendering engine. So each one of those machines just has a dialog that looks like this running currently. And there will be a slight delay while, it lo while those machines pick up the same data. But you'll also note that all of the data that this scene is using is on the network. So um, it's all out there on a folder that they can load. I can uh, set this real quick. If, and this is something you'll need to do if you haven't already um, unified your paths to a place that's on the, full, on the server. So here's where the scene was loaded from. I'll just say use path. And this makes sure that all of the uh, slaves will find the files in the right spot. Okay, so switch this view to active shade. And we'll take a look at the scene loading up. I'll activate my perspective view. And within a few seconds, we've got all of the machines contributing. We can take a look at that. I use a tool called ReefMO to monitor my render slaves. ReefMO looks like this. And I've added the IP numbers for all the machines that are contributing, and you can see their CPU usage. We use this to not only monitor, but also control our render farm, including um, waking up machines, shutting them down, and letting them automatically shut down when projects are finished using this energy saving tool that detects if machines have been idle for too long. You can learn more about ReefMO at trinity3d.com. So all these machines did pick the job up. They're all active. And let's take a look at my response time now when I orbit around the scene. 
I have seven machines, and they're all uh, eight core machines, so uh, I got about 56 cores operating right now. And now it only takes about four seconds to get a decent idea of what our rendering is looking like. Okay, I'll continue this tutorial in the next movie.